Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this little tiny cauldron. So if you would like to learn how to make this little tiny cauldron, you have come to the right place. To give you an idea of the size, it is about two inches tall and about two inches wide. So this is a nice small little accessory that can go along with my witch gnome tutorial or really anything for Halloween. It also could just be a little standalone make. Um, for this project, I will show you how to make it either uh, unstuffed and you can actually put things inside of it or you can stuff it and put a little uh, different color on top and it will look like you have fluid inside of your cauldron. So to make this project, you are going to need a worsted weight yarn, or if you would like to, you can substitute a different type of yarn. Um, I am using a 3.5 millimeter hook. Obviously you can use whatever type of hook you want. Um, I recommend going down a few sizes from your ball band recommendation. So for a worsted weight yarn, it typically recommends a five millimeter hook. Just to give you an example of what a hook size does, this is a uh, made with a 3.5 and this was made with a 4.25. Uh, they are the same yarn, um, but you will notice there is a slight size difference. Uh, 3.5 will definitely give you nice tight stitches and uh, amigurumi that holds its shape, um, but you may not have to use a 3.5 in order to get nice tight stitches to hide your polyfill um, so that you don't see it through. If you're using a different type of yarn, just try out a couple different sizes of hook. Um, unless you already know what kind you like for that. You're also going to want a stitch marker, which is optional, but uh, I would recommend just because it makes it a little easier. If you want to stuff your project, you'll need just a tiny bit of polyfill or some yarn scraps. I actually used yarn scraps to stuff this. So it's a good use for those little tiny bits that you end up with that you can't do anything with. Um, you're also going to want the color for your cauldron, and if you plan on uh, making it look like there is fluid inside of here, you are going to want a second color to use for that. The first thing that we're going to do to start our cauldron is we are going to make a magic circle. So to make a magic circle, you're going to take these two fingers, you're going to lay your yarn tail across them and secure it with your thumb, and you're going to wrap around your fingers so that it crosses over the yarn that was already wrapped around your fingers. Then you're gonna go underneath this first loop, grab the second one and pull through, and then you're gonna turn your hook so that it creates a little loop around your hook. Then you're just going to take your working yarn, which is the yarn that's attached to the ball band, wrap it around your hook and pull through. And that is how you make a magic circle. You can pull your little magic circle tail out and sit it here. And then uh, how you work through this is you work through it just like you would um, any other stitch, except for that you work over the circle itself and the tail. So we are gonna place six single crochets into our magic circle. So we're gonna go through the center and work over both of those at the same time. We're gonna pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. And that's how you do a, a single crochet. So go through, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. That gives us two single crochets and we want six. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. You're welcome to use a stitch marker in that first stitch if you would like to, but since this is just the very beginning, um, you can also just count your way back um, so that you know where you are you know how many stitches you have. All right, and then you are going to pull on this magic circle tail. Don't pull super tightly yet, but pull enough to start to cinch it. And then you're gonna go into that first stitch that you worked and you are going to single crochet. You're gonna place a second single crochet into that same stitch. And then you can go ahead and grab onto this magic circle tail again. And we are going to give it a nice tug. Just like so. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my stitch marker and I'm going to place it into that first single crochet that we made. So remember we put two into the same stitch. Well, I want to mark that first one. That is the first stitch. So when I get back around to this stitch, I'll know I made my way back to the beginning of the round. We're going to place two single crochets into every stitch. So there are six single crochets, um, and when we place two single crochets into every stitch, which is called an increase, we will have 12 stitches at the end of the round. So just place two single crochets into each stitch. And like I said, this is called a single crochet increase. And as you work, if you need to pull on that tail to tighten up the middle of your magic circle, you can give it a tug at any point. And then here is my last stitch, so I'm placing my last increase. There we go. I'm going to give my magic circle tail a little tug again. All right. That was the end of round two. We made it back to our stitch marker here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out and I'm gonna place a single crochet. Return my stitch marker to that stitch to mark the beginning of the round. And this round's repeat is going to be a single crochet and an increase. So we've got our single crochet. In this next stitch, we are gonna place two single crochets for an increase. And then we are going to single crochet. And then we are gonna increase. So like I said, the repeat for the round is single crochet and then an increase. And you do that six times and that'll bring you back to your stitch marker. Single crochet and increase. And you have 12 stitches right now. So you have a stitch count of 12, but at the end of this round, you will have a stitch count of 18. All right, single crochet, and then increase. And I've got two stitches left here. So single crochet in the first one, and two single crochets in the second one. And we're back to our stitch marker. All right, and moving on, we are going to place a single crochet into that first stitch. Replace your stitch marker. And the repeat for this round is going to be two single crochets and then an increase. So we already had one single crochet. So I placed my second and did my increase. And we're gonna go single crochet, single crochet, and then two single crochets in the same stitch, which is called an increase. Just kind of repeating that um, in case you don't know, because then it will um, stick in your head better for learning. So here we go. You're gonna do this six times, again, that repeat of two single crochets and then an increase. And you have 18 stitches currently, um, but by the end of the round, you will have 24 stitches. So you can always double count your stitches if you think you maybe messed up or anything like that. Um, that will tell you if you're on the right track. Also, another good way to know you're on the right track is the way that I work this project, you will always um, end on an increase if it is a round that has increases in it. So if you get to the end of a round with increases and you're not ending on an increase, then you know you need to go back and uh, figure out what's up with that. <laughs> but this is a pretty easy and forgiving project. So um, if you are off by a stitch, you could always just throw an extra stitch in to get yourself back up to count and you'll be fine as long as it's not, you know, happening a whole bunch. All right, so now that we have made our way around, you are just gonna single crochet for four rounds. So go ahead and pop out the stitch marker like I just did and place your single crochet. And what I mean by single crochet for four rounds is 
a round is when you go all the way around your work when you're working in the round like this. So from your stitch marker all the way back to your stitch marker is one round. We are going to do four rounds and this is going to start to cup up our work. Now keep in mind that the inside of your work is the side that this magic circle tail is on. So what that means is you should be as it cups, cupping your work up so that this magic circle tail is on the inside of your work. Um, you will be crocheting on this side that's closest to you. So you're going to be crocheting on the side closest to you, working towards the left. And that's how you know that you have the outside of your stitches on the outside. So go ahead and single crochet for four rounds and meet me back. We are going to go ahead and pop this stitch marker out and we are going to do some decreasing. So we are going to do two single crochets and then a decrease. So here's my first single crochet and I'm popping the stitch marker back in real quick. And then doing my second single crochet. And then I'm going to be doing what's called an invisible decrease. It's what I like to do for amigurumi. And real quick, I will show you how to do an invisible decrease in case you don't know. Uh, for an invisible decrease, you work in the front loops only of your stitches. So real quick, in case you aren't sure, I want to show you where your front loops are. So when you work into a stitch, you normally work under two loops right here. Make sure that this is focused for you guys. Hopefully you can see. You normally work under two loops. There is a front loop, which is this loop closest to you, and then there is a back loop, which is this loop furthest from you, closer to the inside of your work. And I want to make sure that's focused. I hope it is. Um, so you're going to want to work under just this front loop. And what you're going to do is you're going to go under your front loop, of your next stitch and then you're actually going to go under the front loop of the following stitch. You're not going to yarn over or anything in between. After you've gone through both then you yarn over and you pull through both of those. Yarn over and pull through again. And that is how you do an invisible decrease. So once again we're going to do two single crochets And then we're gonna do that invisible decrease. To show you one more time, an invisible decrease, you grab just the front loops of the next two stitches. Then you yarn over and you pull through both of those loops that are on your hook. And then you yarn over and you pull through two again. If you are having trouble with the invisible decrease, you can do a traditional uh, decrease, which I will show you how to do as well. So. Go ahead and do those two single crochets. And if you're struggling with the invisible decrease, you can do the regular decrease where you go under the whole stitch, just like you normally would for like a single crochet, um, pull a loop through, and then go through the next stitch and pull a loop through. And you'll have three loops on your hook and then you'll just yarn over and pull through all three. Um, the reason I like to do the invisible decrease is this one will create a little bit of a knot kind of uh, texture on the outside of your amigurumi. It's not a big deal, but um, the invisible decrease is just a little bit more seamless and blends in. So that's why I prefer to do it that way. But it can be a little difficult to do for some people and uh, I totally understand if you would rather just do a regular decrease because it isn't that big of a difference but I'm gonna go ahead and do my invisible decrease and then I am just gonna continue to work the rest of the way around. We're doing two single crochets and a decrease as our repeat for this round. And you should have had 24 stitches at the beginning of the round and you will have 18 when you're done uh, with the decreasing that we do. So just doing two single crochets and a decrease. Two single crochets and one more decrease. And that puts us back at our stitch marker. 
And the same with the increases, um, you will be ending on a decrease, just like we did um, when we did increases, how I said that you end on an increase. If you're ending on a decrease, then you know that your stitch count is working out right for you. So you should have 18 stitches now. And moving on, we are going to be doing a single crochet and a decrease now. So just one single crochet, popping that stitch marker back in, and then a decrease. And that is gonna be the repeat for the round. So you're just gonna single crochet and decrease, single crochet and decrease. And you're just gonna repeat that all the way around. Um, you should have 18 stitches right now, and when you reach the end of the round, you will just have 12. By the way, if you are planning on stuffing your cauldron, you can just stick this magic circle tail inside of your cauldron, um, and it can act as a little bit of stuffing. If you're planning on using this to uh, store things inside of, then if you would like to, you can weave that in in the inside if you'd like to kind of hide it a little bit more. Um, that is up to you. And now that you have made your way back to your stitch marker and you have those 12 stitches, we are going to be doing some increases. And we are actually gonna be switching to a half double crochet. So a half double crochet is very similar to a single crochet, except for that you yarn over your uh, hook before going through and pulling up a loop. So we're gonna go ahead and do our first half double crochet. You're gonna take your hook and you're gonna yarn over. You're gonna go through the first stitch and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and you're going to pull through all three. And that is how you do a half double crochet. You're gonna go ahead and place a second half double crochet in that same stitch because we are doing half double crochet increases. You can replace your stitch marker. And this is gonna form the kind of brim of our cauldron and kind of poof out a little bit. So you are going to place two half double crochets in every stitch around. Just to remind you one more time, a half double crochet is yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. All right, so do that and make sure that you do two half double crochets in every stitch all the way around. And as you get back to the beginning here, you should have this nice and flared out shape happening. Um, we are going to end the top of our cauldron now. You've got the base shape done. You're going to pop the stitch marker out and you are going to skip that first stitch and go to the second stitch and slip stitch into the top of it. So if you don't know how to do a slip stitch, uh, let me show you real quick. Make sure you skip that first stitch. You're going to go through, pull your loop through, and then just pull it straight through the loop on your hook. And that's it. Very simple. All right. And then we are going to go ahead and tie off. So go ahead and grab your scissors and cut your yarn and pull up on your hook, just like that. Now, same for this as the bottom, how I said, uh, depending on if you're stuffing your cauldron, um, you may want to weave that in really well and uh, hide the tail and you know trim off any excess. Or if you are planning on stuffing your cauldron, then you only need to weave it down a little bit. So I'm just gonna go down into the side of my cauldron here, right inside of like kind of the lip of the brim and grab the inside of these stitches a little bit, just like that. And then I'm just going to weave down just a little bit further. Pull through and then I'm just going to hide 
this tail inside of my cauldron as some stuffing. If you're not going to stuff your cauldron and you're going to use it to hold stuff, then you can weave it around a little bit more to hide that tail and secure it, and then you can trim off the excess. And it looks like this. And you can also feel free to trim off the excess even if you are stuffing it, if you prefer to. So here is the base of your cauldron. It already looks like a cauldron at this point, um, except for that it needs some little feet. So we are going to make some tiny little feet for it. You're gonna make three of these, so I'm just gonna show you how to do it once, and then if you need to, you can rewatch this part to make three of them. So we're gonna start off by making a magic circle which just a quick reminder, you go lay the tail over these two fingers, secure it with your thumb, wrap around so that it crosses over itself, go under the first loop, grab the second, pull through, twist, and then yarn over and pull through. If you need a slowed down version of how to do a magic circle again, I do have a little magic circle tutorial that will be linked in the description box and you are welcome to go and watch that. All right, and now that you've got your magic circle, uh, we're gonna go ahead and place four single crochets in our magic circle. So only four this time. So go ahead and single crochet four. There's three and four. Now this part works up really quick. So go ahead and pull on your magic circle tail. Don't cinch it all the way yet. Just close it up a little bit so that there's just like a tiny little hole in it. And then you are going to go to that first st stitch and single crochet into it. Do your best to flip your work so that this magic circle tail will be on the inside of your work. So I like to just take my fingertip and kind of poke into it and kind of round it like a little hat to my fingertip. You can go ahead and pull on that magic circle tail and tighten this too. And then you are just going to single crochet three more times. So you are single crocheting in each of those four stitches. And yes, this part is very small, so just do the best that you can. Um, it is kind of difficult to see where your stitches are when you're working in to such a small um, area, but there's really not enough room to add stitch markers. So just do the best that you can. And there's my fourth single crochet. Once again, like I said, use your fingertip to kind of form this as a little hat to your finger so that your magic circle tail is on the inside. And then I'm just going to chain one and I'm gonna cut my yarn and I'm gonna leave myself enough of a tail to attach onto the cauldron. You are going to want to make three of these in total so feel free to uh, re-watch this part of the tutorial if you need to, but you should just have this little tiny nub and that is going to act as the feet of our cauldron. So they are gonna be these little tiny nubs that go on the bottom of the cauldron and that's what they sit on. All right, so once you've made your three little nubs, meet me back and I will let you know how to proceed. What we're going to do is we are going to take each one and we've got this little tail that we just finished uh, crocheting with that we tied off with and then we've got this tail that it was from the magic circle um, we're going to put the magic circle tail onto our darning needle or um, you can use your crochet hook for this also if you wanted to and all we're going to do is pull it up so that it's not just coming out of the middle but take it out one of those top stitches so that it comes out onto the outside so just take it and you can either pull it through with your crochet hook or you can use your darning needle. And that will just make it so that we can actually use these to attach it on to the bottom of our cauldron. So what you're gonna do to attach these is you're going to put them in 
um, kind of equally spaced out increments. We've got three of them. So you're gonna want to do sort of like a um, triangle shape based around the center of the bottom of your cauldron. So it's pretty easy to see the center because of that magic circle. Um, so you're going to want to kind of disperse them around this. And what I like to do is I'm going to go like, this is the center circle right here. I'm going to skip one row, go in right here, and pull through. And if you're planning on stuffing this, you can actually attach these without even having to sew anything in, and I will show you how. So, okay, I've got that one gone through with the with one of my tails. Um, I already wove these ones, uh, magic circle tails, up through the side um, to pull them onto the outside, so I don't need to do that. Um, it doesn't matter which tail you use for this, by the way, but I'm just gonna go around and do one tail from each one, and I'm gonna space them kind of evenly around and try to put them the same distance from the center. So I skipped one row after this um, magic circle. So I want to go here and I want to, this is perfectly across, which I don't want to do because I want to like do all three of them evenly. So I'm going to go right here. And then I'm going to pull that through. And the cool thing about this is they are not attached yet, so you can still move them around as much as you want to. So if you get them all on there and realize that they are not evenly spaced, it is super easy to just pull them out and redo them. All right, so we've got those two. I'm gonna go ahead and go right there. I think that's about evenly spaced. And the reason that I did one from each of these instead of doing both tails from each of them so far is because now that we've got them all on here, we can figure out where we want to go in with the second um, tail on all of them to make them stand the best. So you can pull on these tails that are in to keep them secured. Just kind of hold on to those if you want to. Um, to keep them nice and tight. And then you can just sort of play around with the setup of these to see what the best way for them to face is so that they're gonna give you, you know, your little tripod of legs to stand on. And then once you get an idea of how you want these to kind of all face, you just go ahead and thread your needle and push them in through your cauldron bottom. So for this one, I'm thinking I will go through right here, pull that up. And this part is just gonna be based on feel, you know, you're just gonna kind of feel it out. Um, basically the idea is just that you want them to be able to stand. So you'll just have to play around with it until you get them set up in a way you like. Um, at least with the other one that I made, it was literally super easy to do that. The first configuration I did um, was perfect. So let's see how this one goes. You can kind of be doing yours at the same time as me if you want. And we can see how we like the bottom. Um, and then I will show you, um, you, when you're done doing this, you can either go through and sew all of these tails in to the bottom, or you can actually just knot them together on the inside, and this can be completely no sew. So that's totally up to you how you want to do that. But I am always down for a no sew pattern, so... And here's what I was talking about, about, you know, being able to figure out how you want it to face. You know, depending on how I have this one face, it could completely change whether these are, you know, kind of equally spaced apart or not. So I'm going to try right there and see how I like that. And now that I've got all three of them with all of their um, tails pulled through, I'm just going to kind of tug on all of these 
get them nice and tight there. And then I'm going to sit my cauldron down and it is standing perfectly. So here is how mine came out. And then what I'm gonna do is I am just going to flip this inside out a little bit, just kind of push up um, at the magic circle so that it pushes your work um, up and you can kind of pull on these too. And the only reason I'm doing this is just to bring the inside of this forward so that I can knot these. And you're just gonna take two strings at a time and do nice tight knots with them on the inside. You know, give it a nice solid pull and knot tightly. You're tying together the two different tails for each of the uh, cauldron legs. And this is an alternative to sewing so that you don't have to sew them together. Um, if you would like to, you can sew them though. And you're just going to uh, put your yarn onto your darning needle and weave it back and forth along the inside of the bottom of the cauldron um, until you're you know, happy that you've secured your tails as much as you want. And that is totally up to you if you would, if you would prefer to do it that way. If you're not planning on stuffing it and you don't want, you know, little knots in the bottom, that's totally fine. Um, but honestly, even if you're not planning on stuffing it and you're planning on putting stuff inside of it, um, I don't think these knots would matter at all because they're gonna be down in the bottom of your cauldron. And I think this is a nice secure way to do it. So that's how I'm doing it. So I'm just triple knotting each one of these. And then I am going to trim all of my tails, which you do not have to trim these. You can just leave them and use them for stuffing inside of there, but I don't know, I'm just trimming them. And then push down on the bottom of your cauldron to fluff it back out. And then what I like to do is once I've got my cauldron back facing um, out, is I like to put the little feet onto the table and then just kind of uh, hold on to the edges and sort of push down. I think that it makes the uh, cauldron sit nicely. And then that is what we are looking like. So you can actually be done at this step if you want to. Uh, you don't have to put anything in your cauldron. And then if you don't, you can actually use this to put stuff inside of. But if you would like to have it look like there is a liquid inside of it and stuff it to be more like a plushie, then I will show you how to make this little piece to do that. You're gonna want to grab whatever color you would like to use to make it look like there's liquid in there. Um, if you want it to be like a potion color, you know, some kind of magical color. I'm using a sparkly yarn because I feel like that's, you know, perfect for a little magic concoction kind of look. Um, and then we are just going to be making a little piece to put into the center um, up here. You're going to first start out by making a magic circle which I've already shown you how to do uh, slowed down, so I'm not gonna walk you through it again, but if you need extra help with it, I do have a tutorial linked in the description box, or you can always rewind this video um, to be reminded of how exactly you do that. Um, but once you've got your magic circle, we are going to pull our little tail out to the side there, and we are going to uh, put six single crochets into our magic circle. So you're just going to single crochet six times, working over the magic circle side and the tail. There's our third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then you're just going to grab this magic circle tail and gently pull on it, not closing it up quite all the way yet, but cinching it up some. And then you're gonna go back to this first stitch on the other side, you know, where you started, and you are going to place two single crochets into that stitch. That is an increase. And then you can go ahead and grab this magic circle tail and hold on to your work and give it a nice solid tug and it will close up that circle for you. Um, if you would like to, you can place a stitch marker into that first stitch or you can just keep count, it's up to you. 
but we are gonna do an increase in each of those six stitches that we just placed. So you're gonna place two single crochets into each stitch. And we have six stitches. So by the end of the round, you should have 12 stitches. So there's my fourth increase, my fifth increase, and my sixth increase. And same as before, you can pull on that magic circle tail at any time to uh, cinch it up if it is not all the way cinched as you go. Um, and then we are just having one more thing to do. Um, we are gonna do a single crochet and then an increase repeat round. So we're gonna pop a single crochet into that first stitch. And like I said, you can optionally place a stitch marker if you would like to. This is a really small piece that we're working with right now, so it may not be, um, you may not want to, it's up to you. But we're doing a single crochet and then an increase. And we're gonna do that as our repeat all the way around. So six times you'll do a single crochet and then an increase. And when you've repeated that six times, that will put you back at your stitch marker and you will have 18 stitches in, uh, from where we started with 12. And that is all we're gonna be doing for this piece. It's very simple, just a little piece to insert at the top of the cauldron to um, seal it off. And you can stuff your cauldron with either polyfill or yarn scraps. Um, I used yarn scraps to fill my other cauldron, um, and you can use a combination of the two also. Small things like this are a really good way to use up those yarn scraps if you want to. And there we go. So that is all you have to do for this piece. I'm gonna give a nice final tug on that magic circle tail, and I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch here, and then I'm gonna chain one and give myself a little bit of a tail to sew with when I cut off. Um, you can sew this on to your magic, uh, to your magic cauldron. You can, well, I mean, it is a magic cauldron, but I was mixing magic circle and cauldron together. Um, you can sew this on or hot glue it on. So if you want to hot glue it, go ahead and plug in your hot glue gun. Um, and that would actually make this cauldron completely no sew if you decided to go that route. Um, but at this point, go ahead and grab your polyfill or your yarn scraps, and you can go ahead and stuff your cauldron. So for this one, oh, and if you would like to weigh down your cauldron, um, feel free to put like a river rock or something in the bottom of it um, to give it a little bit of weight at the bottom. And then go ahead and stuff your cauldron. Like I said, I used yarn scraps on my first one, but I'm using polyfill on this one. So you can definitely do it either way. Once you've got this stuffed uh, to the desired amount, you can either um, hot glue or sew the top of this um, little piece to the top of your cauldron. If you're gonna hot glue it, I would just take your hot glue gun and go around the inside here, just a little bit lower than you actually want to attach your um, little insert here. And I would just do a thin layer all the way around and then push down on this um, with this piece. But if you're going to sew it, I will real quick give you a little demonstration. Um, I'm just going to stick this in the top here. I put the magic circle tail underneath of my little purple piece here and just kind of pushed it down uh, in, and it's gonna be kind of stuffing. And then I'm going to thread my needle with my tail here. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep this pushed down, keep my magic circle tail underneath of it. I'm just gonna push down on this with my finger to keep it in the middle. And then I'm just gonna work my way around. Um, I'm gonna kinda pull up on the brim a little bit so that I can um, have this recessed a little bit so that it looks like liquid down in the cauldron. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the back loops of my stitches. Hang on, let me get you guys a good angle here and focus the camera. There we go. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the back loops of my, my stitches on this purple piece, and then I'm just going to kind of go over and grab a little bit of the inner brim, um, not the stitches that are on the top up here because I don't want my liquid to go all the way over to the, to the brim of my cauldron, but just kind of the inside of my cauldron. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around and you don't necessarily have to stitch every single piece on. You could probably go every other stitch, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do every stitch and I'm just grabbing this back loop and then going along the inside of this brim. And I'm making sure I don't go all the way through because I don't want my purple to show through on this side. I'm just grabbing the inside of the side of these stitches in here, okay? And I'm not going all the way over to the edge of the brim because I want this liquid to look like it's inside the cauldron, not completely, you know, going over the top of it like a lid, if that makes sense. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around. And you just go all the way around doing that. And like I said, you can continue to kind of pull up on the brim as you go so that this is like recessed down into here and then that is how you attach it. So you see how it's coming along over there and I've got my brim still, and that is all you do. And there is your cauldron. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure that you leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, and I would love it if you would hit that like button and that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I have some uh, other tutorials linked in the description box or you can go to my page and check them out. I also do lots of yarny vloggy kind of content. So I would love to see you around. Um, but anyway, I hope that you enjoy your new little make and have a great day.